IDBM Challenge Season 1 Episode 7 What is design thinking? Why should you care about that? In today's episode Lotta, a design thinking expert gives you the basics of design thinking to get you excited about the concept more. Enjoy! Hello everyone, I'm here with Lotta Hassi. Happy to have you here. Thank you, very nice to be here. Would you tell us a little bit about your background? Yes, certainly. So I'll try to keep it brief, right? No, but I, so my background educationally is from the business school where I did IDBM. And then I co-founded a, a design agency, but very soon afterwards I joined the Business Innovation Technology Research Center because I got so curious about the way that designers work and I wanted to study design and innovation processes. And I spent quite some years at the research center uh, focusing on how do companies innovate and which processes they follow and so on. And then about six years ago, I um, joined Esade Business School in Barcelona, and that's where I'm based right now. Well, right now we're not on Miami, but that's where I'm working currently. And because you teach design thinking, what is, like, for the people who, as well as the IDBM students, who haven't heard that much about design thinking, what would you say design thinking is? Okay, so uh, the, what I will say is kind of a simplification because the... Um, when you are starting to learn uh, design thinking, like anything, you need first a kind of, mm, kind of uh, very, let's say, very well structured overview of what it is about, and that's what I typically start with when I speak to people that have never even heard about it before. And one way that we can describe it is, let's imagine it as a, as a methodology that has a process and a, and a set of tools. Um, and keep in mind that these tools are originally coming from different um, say fields of design and social sciences and then when you take more degrees of liberty you can integrate other tools but that being said so we have a process and a set of tools and what we the first phase is always um, focusing on the, the problem and understanding the problem and then comes the second phase which is understanding the solutions and and the way that you always start design thinking is getting an understanding of what what's the problem or what's the context that you're working with trying to identify an initial problem statement. How might we improve this or that? Something that already uh, focuses you on a specific user group or user groups, but basically you need to identify some significant, uh, or let's say important stakeholder group, because the next phase is that you need to go or get out of the building, you need to go into that context and understand these people for whom you will eventually be designing. So that's called need finding, for example. Uh, so do user research and then you come back to the office or back to the building from the field and, and you reflect on those findings. So this is kind of what the first problem phase is about. So initial problem statement, field work to understand what that problem, what the needs are about and then reflecting on those so that you redefine the problem statement that you had at the very beginning and you make it more specific and, and more actionable. Actionable in the sense that you can design some potential solutions for that. So that's kind of the, the first part and for each of these you have different kinds of tools that you can be using. Let's say, for example, for user research, you can do shadowing or interviewing or living the life of, or day in the life of a person and so on. And also for analyzing those field results, you have different kinds of tools that you can be using. And for designers, I'm sure that several of them are familiar. Um, and several of them come from anthropology, for example. So that's kind of the problem phase. And then when you have that redefined problem statement and you start then entering into the solution space, I'm making it super concrete now. <laughs> um, then you basically, it's, you come up with, you can use different kinds of methods of coming up with ideas for solutions, but you try to come up with different ways on how could you address that problem or that need that you've identified. And, and then you prototype those ideas. Uh, you can give them different kinds of, so prototyping to me means that you give your idea, your, I mean, this could be also like an organizational change. You, the idea might be a structural change in an organization. So you need to give it some sort of um, form, typically more concrete or visual, that other people can, can react to it. So you can share it in a, in a way that goes beyond a verbal explanation, and other people can react to it in, in, or use it so that you can collect feedback. And then based on that feedback, you reflect, how does this change our idea? Uh, is this idea worth pursuing? Should we change it? Should we tweak it? 
do we know enough about the, the user? Should we actually jump back to, to the need finding phase, so the initial phases of, of this process? And very, I mean, there are several cases that I see that people go through very linearly through the process for the first time, and then they arrive at testing the prototype and they realize, we don't even understand what the problem is, and then they loop back to the very beginning of the user research. So these are kind of the like, general phases in, in the process. Uh, what you need to keep in mind all the time is that it's very reflective, uh, because the whole, I mean, you can also visualize, kind of imagine design thinking as a massive learning process. So what you're trying to create all the time is understanding about the problems and then understanding about the solutions. And that requires constant reflection and then taking action based on that. And that's why it's iterative. So you're supposed to be revisiting work or at least reconsidering that work. Can we dive into what you said about uncertainty, that it helps with uncertainty? What do you mean? So how does, um, so okay, let me jump back because I know I didn't answer your question of what's design thinking and okay, that's kind so. of related to this. <laughs> because for me, if, um, like what are the, so when I say constantly me because I want to say that this is really my perception on, on what, the way that I kind of conceptualize design thinking and what I, coming from the management and what got, caught my interest was uh, the practice of iterative prototyping which essentially aims at learning. So you're trying to create information or understanding uh, of the world around you. And for me, that's one of the key, key characteristics of, of good design or design thinking. And another key characteristic is the user centricity. So these, both of these, what they try to do is bring new information, knowledge, understanding of where we are operating. And that's exactly what you need to do when you're dealing with uncertainty. So if you have an uncertain innovation project, um, which basically means that at the very beginning, you don't know what's the answer to the problem that you have at hand. You might not even know what the problem is or the root causes of the problem. I mean, that's a very typical situation of where design thinking comes to play, right? So what you try to do uh, through the methodology and different um, say tools that are related to design thinking is to create understanding. So what are the user needs that we are, or what are the stakeholder needs? What is the, the issue that we're actually uh, tackling here? What kind of solutions should we offer to those, those problems? And you, you continue exploring that through iterative, iterative uh, prototyping. So it's these two, let's say, key characteristics of the ways that designers have been working and what let's say other fields are, are kind of borrowing from that field and adapting to their fields, which really um, helps in tackling that kind of, or let's say it helps in working in uncertain contexts. And what for me was really the source of, uh, what really kind of got me very, very excited when, when we had that design agency and I, I got drawn onto the side of academia was the, the practice of prototyping and how, uh, how little that's uh, actually understood in, in fields um, outside of professional design. And that's really a key part of how you're gonna be handling uncertainty. What do you think makes a great design thinker? Hmm. What is the attributes that makes a good design thinker? Okay, so I really, um, once again, the way that I see design thinking is that it aims at learning. So it essentially comes down to what are good attributes of, a, or what are the attributes of a, of a good learner? Um, and I think that's openness, so the, the ability to kind of remain, um, how do you say that, well, open to, to new inputs, new ideas that might be contradicting the ones that you started off with. And then not being, um, because a lot, of, a lot of people get kind of nervous of, uh, of the feeling of remaining open. So I know I mean intellectually, when you're, let's say when you're following a project and they rush to give answers or they rush to a certain solution. So it requires a kind of, um, the, to be comfortable with that uncertainty of not knowing exactly where you're gonna be taking this and being able to still kind of analytically look at uh, different op options that, that come out. So a certain um, how I, toleration of, of that openness and undecisiveness in some, um, in some sense at the right stage of the project. Because what I see constantly is, uh, now once again, my current experience comes from uh, working with business students, that especially in, in that world, there's kind of a rush to a conclusion, a recommendation and so on. 
and it's very difficult to kind of hold them back and say you don't have to jump there yet. You in fact still should be exploring what the problem is about or what the different options for a solution could be. And I think it's because a lot of people feel a pressure or they do, no, do not want to come across like undecisive. So they want to give a solution and so on. Or it could be that our brains are just wired that way that we want to give a solution and, and, and solve whatever it is that we're tackling. So this is at least one thing that you have to be able to uh, remain open, so diverge before you converge. So that's one, and I think part of that is uh, intellectual humility. So you cannot learn if you think that you have all the answers or you know how, how the world works. So you, and I think that's kind of linked with like a curiosity, openness, this intellectual humility, which has, has to be there. Otherwise, the kind of search that you're doing and the learning that you're doing through design thinking, it, it might be limited or you're not doing it at all. So that's certainly one uh, or three <laughs> key, key, key attributes or characteristics. Then another thing is, um, and that's, uh, at least for me, it was very hard, um, that what you try to do constantly is kind of move fluently between like very concrete action and kind of more abstract thinking. So that's what I mean is in terms of when you're, let's say that you've done field work, let's say that you've been, for example, experimenting with a solution and you get some, some feedback from that. So then you have to do a lot of reflection. What does this mean for whatever it is that we're developing? Uh, should we, are we missing some information? Should we loop back uh, to previous phases? Um, what should we be doing next? So you have to go from kind of very concrete starting point where you've been having some feedback um, on some level to whatever it is that you're developing to go to some very, let's say, analytical and reflective and abstract thinking and then be able to come back to, so what are the practical next steps that we should be doing? And this links to, once again, uncertainty, because what happens is that you have to be identifying also where do we have these kind of knowledge gaps. So what are the things that we should be learning about next and then turn that into practical steps. So the kind of second bunch of characteristics that I think are central is this ability to move between practical action and then abstract uh, ref like reflection and kind of constantly do that. So I don't know if that makes sense. Do, does it make sense? I think it makes okay. sense. <laughs> um, having gone through the IBM experience yourself, mm. and now being have had a background in industry and academia, do you have any concrete advice you would like to give the IBM students of this year? I no, enjoy the ride, make the most out of it. <laughs> That's what I would say. No, no, just take that it's a very unique. Uh, uh, time to be using for uh, for learning as much as possible just for the uh, sake of learning and also that uh, a moment in time where kind of I think it's very um, fruitful for experimentation in several ways so experimentation in terms of what is it that you want to be doing and so on because um, it won't like I always remember what my accounting professor said is that the more mis you're going to make an X amount of mistakes in your life. The more you make at, at school, the less costly it's going to be for you. So this is coming from an accounting professor, but she had a point there. So basically kind of be more fearless in, in, in trying things uh, because it's really a, a time a time that's dedicated for learning. So why, why to hold something back in, in that regard? So kind of take risks. <laughs> But don't take, stop taking risks either at the end of it, so that's not the message. <laughs> it, this is quite nice because it ties into what Paola also said about um, what she seeks in people that she hires. Um, it's a sense of fearlessness. Mm. So maybe students in IBM should practice that. Yeah, and I think it comes from, like, you have to first be curious about something and then just don't be afraid of following that. I mean, don't over-rationalize it, just go there. So I have a little bit of an exercise. Yep. And I would like uh, you to just say a word or a sentence. What comes to your mind when I say these words? Technology. Okay. Oh, I love engineers. <laughs> and space. And I mean, like, outer space. Oh, exploration, kind of scary. Business. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Mm. 
I'm afraid of the associations. <laughs> mm, business, okay. Sorry, see, this is not even the first response anymore because I've reviewed all of them in my head. So I would say <laughs> sustainable. Sustainable, <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. Um, how about innovation? Mm, you're asking tough associations. Innovation, then I think of technology. Which is weird, yeah. Future. Space. Yeah, because I'm afraid that my, my currently eight-month-old eight month daughter will want to go to the space, or will go to space, and I'm like freaking out of the idea. <laughs> Why? Because for me, it seems so, wow, out there. It is. Yeah. <laughs> um, strategy. Planning. Design. Mm, doing. <laughs> IDBM. Ah, nice times. <laughs> and IMDB. What is that? <laughs> We've gotten this reaction before. Uh, it's the movie website. Ah, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> <a> better one. 